West West Show. Welcome back to another episode of the 135 Footy Show, uh, proudly part of the WizWiz Network. Uh, you can go check out all our podcasts over at wizwiznet.com. Um, back again, round 23, and I'm joined by our WizWiz columnist, Simon Armani again. How's it going, bro? Hello, so yeah, bro, I've been good, been good, bro. It's been a good um, week of uh, NRL matches also. It's been uh, really enjoyable, bro, so good to be back with yeah, nice. We'll see you. We missed you a few weeks. Um, had Stacey filling in, so uh, good content, good um, insights from the Usman. In the um, yeah, he, is, he wasn't feeling the love from you for for the Warriors last week. Um, nothing from the Warriors oh, yeah. this week. I guess we got the bye, so the Ulsters are uh, having the night off. I think they ran the pod uh, counter counter ruck last night, mate. So uh, cool, bro. Um, how's your week been, man? Like, uh, what 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 have you seen around the uh? What's kind of stood out this week so far for the for the NRL, man? Um, yeah, bro. Um, first and foremost, man, still happy for my uh, Broncos um, traveling well. I think um, it's always good for a week for me when uh, the Broncos are, are winning, bro. So um, not only that, but the the performances have been pretty good. So it's good to uh, quiet up some of those haters out there because people still think we're uh, going to fall off the cliff, eh? But uh, I think it's still early, man. I think, <laughs> I, I think barring some miraculous uh, wins from the bottom place teams, I think we kind of submitted our our eighth spot, and currently um, tracking at second spot. So we're yeah, going to be nice. hard to um, upset off the top four there, also. But um, um, no, bro, I um, I uh, I watched an interesting show uh, a couple of nights ago, also on. Um, 360. Did you catch that one, bro? Um, when these uh, two trainers on there, yeah, yeah, talking about uh, Joseph Swali. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I saw shots on that going in on um, on uh, Swali. What was that about? What were they going in on him? Oh, this well, was about this guy. Um, who I don't mind this guy, his name's Paul Crawley, bro. He's a writer for I don't know which uh paper he writes for, but he's a guest. Um, Queenslander, he's Queensland writer. Nah, I think he's, he's one of these Sydney journos. Yeah. He's a regular guest. <laughs> he's a regular guest. But I think he, um, following the weekend's um, uh, Wallabies smashing from the ABs, oh, yeah, up yeah. the ABs, um, the commander must be running out of um, shit to write about because he brought up this thing about Swali again, how he's not worth, you know, the Wallabies are regretting. Um, I didn't read it myself. I'm just... Judging yeah, on yeah. this uh, episode they had a couple of days ago, that's why he's, is, um, you know, had they made a mistake um, with this big price tag, how he has been not performing this year, blah, blah, blah. And <clears throat> and there's another guest on there, bro, called Brent Reed, who's another journalist. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's Queensland-based uh, yeah, journalist. Yeah, yeah, I've heard him on the, yeah, yeah. But he started pushing back on him, bro, which was really cool, man. And they almost had like a, I mean, well, it was not argument, bro, but it was quite, it was quite funny to see, um, you know, two two guys going head to head, um, just explaining uh, their own views, and and he was just, mm-hmm. he was just kind of telling him he's, you know, he's all shit. Like, so he hasn't had, a, you know, the whole Russo's teams hasn't had the best exactly. year, and um, and I mean, look, a couple of weeks ago he ripped up. So I don't know what games that guy's been watching. He's been yeah, man. injured and, and suspended comes... most of the year. <laughs> Hold up, bro. And it just comes down to this thing about um about the pay packet. Yeah. The, you know, athletes will get. Um this this um well has over as well over a million a year, but um it puts them up there um between both codes, union and league, as one of the highest paid players. So it's you know, it's easy to fucking start talking about this guy and his performances. But it's one thing to know, bro, that that contract doesn't even start till 2025. He's still got another year for the Roosters. Oh, the Roosters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's still there next year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But, but you know, I don't think you should be too judgmental on Kamalo's side. He probably does not oh, reach the same height 19, as, man. Yeah, he's 19. Probably doesn't, um, hasn't um, performed um as lucky last year, but look at that team, bro. The whole team hasn't performed. Oh, yeah, exactly. and, yeah, yeah. and he's in the same boat as um 
Oi for you, the Kiwi centre. Joe Manu. Joe Manu. And yeah, the, yeah. the outside backs have struggled, bro, to get bored, to struggle. You know, they've really just carted up. They've just acted like um, like front rowers. So they haven't really had the ball yeah. in space well, yeah. because the um, the halves have struggled to get them clean balls. So, I mean, what do well, you want? Yeah. What do you and want that's the thing. I think um, you saw it from that game last week, bro, like um, just not getting their own way. And mm. <laughs> Like, I think they try to go, you know, bullies in the middle. Like, you see the way uh, Jared was going out for Payne Haas. Yeah. Just trying to be the bullies. And then I think Fali when oh, we're not getting it our own way. Like, just, I think yeah. they're used to going out. And then, you know, players take a backward step and then it's like, cool, now we've got the ascendancy. Tedesco just runs But Swally, he's had a kind of a, what would you say, like a checkered kind of uh, introduction to the league world also, to the NRL world. Because, and again, like, I think everyone's, you know, expecting him, but it's like, man, like, he's like not even 20 yet. Yeah. There's well, a lot was, of footy um, in him and it's just, you know, that's IQ as well. People just, you know, they see his talent. But once you get in our round level, you look at all these players. Yeah. And, and, a bit of time. and it's almost uh, the downside of being a, a child superstar, bro, because he was. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was playing for the. Remember, he was a uh, Bunnies junior. Well, you look and, at Luke uh, Brooks, all of that pressure. And over the last 11 years, everyone blamed him over a whole team. Yeah. That's probably a good thing, Joe. You know, that's why Lee is going now. Well, this journal has just been of, year um, after year of giving him rubbish of our uh, like, He's a million dollar kid, and what's he doing? What's he doing? So. Well, this journey kind of kind of just started talking about his his past, you know, his intro into the in our own called him a mercenary player, um, whatever the fuck that means. But I kind of got the gist of it, as in like this guy's just in it for the money, and he's yeah, just following over the money, like oh, yeah, this game because, I'll play um, here. Because no. he made um, when he was a junior, he made um. Well, not him, but his representative, his agent, made these clauses in his contract. Um, and oh, it was quite. Move around and... Yeah, uh, something like that. How was just. Um, oh, I, I, I don't want to specifically but say But I mean, if he's a superstar, you know, you look at Sonny Bill, people said the same about him. Yeah. But, but at the time, Bennett sports. was the coach. At the time, Bennett was his coach. And so Bennett was like, nah, it's, we can't sign you on this. So the Roosters went out on a limb and said, "Oh man, we'll, we'll take you," and um, and Roosters signed him, and uh, and now these this guy's saying, "Oh, he's got no loyalty." After the Roosters showed him a bit of loyalty, blah blah blah. But like I've been saying on your show, it's all like, well, why should they, bro? Like players yeah. don't get loyalty from the clubs, man. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. As soon as we you was, fall um, out of four, oh, we was the bunnies' gonna... loyalty when um, you know Adam Reynolds wanted another extra year. You know who's who's who who who's a, a self junior, and well, that's one of, that's go down as one of the biggest mistakes. Well, you look in they blame, history. Yeah, well, they look at the leagues, but your your team is based on your halves, and they drop their half down to the junior grade. Just mm. take him away and like blame him, but the the team's still higher. And then what? <laughs> it's like oh, so Sam Walker's the problem, but now your team's still higher after you dropped them. Yeah, yeah bro. Same, so, exact, I mean, I don't exact, know. Exact same thing, like. They can't yeah. have it both ways and then have a cry and. Yeah. I don't know how you can question someone's motive to sign a contract. You know, their family, their money, uh, the security, um, how they oh. cut. Well, that's the thing. These these guys, these journos, you know, that's their business, and they keep talking about these kids. That's their business. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's work. Like that's the thing. Like you go where the work is. You go where the best money is. Exactly. And they keep going, oh, no, it's for the love of the game. I'm like, hey, mate, these kids stopped loving the game when they were probably 13 and told, hurry up, get up, get up. Like, it wasn't easy for these kids to be getting to where they are now. Like, so it's not for the love of the game. Yeah, they love playing when nah, they're winning. Man. But, man, the love of the game went a long time ago. They they love winning in the in the, what they've learned, but it's business. Yeah, well. that's they right. That much. <clears throat> and I, I don't know the kid um, personally, bro, but he ain't done nothing wrong. You know, and he, he comes across as quite a um, a, a humble guy, you know, and uh, he he hasn't got himself into any trouble off the field. Um, mm. So uh, in that regard, he's probably you know uh, one of Rooster's well-behaved players. Also. What yeah, he gets, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What he's been offered from the the Wallabies, so it's not this fucking Juno's any pissing issue, mate. Yeah. You know, he he's in the same boat. If fucking New Zealand Herald offered him 
fucking million dollar house plus fucking you know a million dollar contract. Um, no question, he'll jump at that. But you know, yeah. call someone a, miss- a mercenary, man. We all are, bro, because we all want the best for ourselves and and our family when it comes to um, getting the best deal at your man, at your job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and especially, you know, their their jobs are measured very differently from any other job. Like, you know, they're professionals and they got to get their work right and stuff. But, you know, their job is very much on that result. Like, you can be a journal and write heaps of columns and people will be like, I really like that and, you know, get all those awards. Yeah. But you're not beating anyone else. Like, it's just, you know, you're... But, yeah, it's not like you're going out there, you've got a defined set of teams and at the end of the mm. year, you've got, you know, you've got an achievement to do. So, so look at it this way. Got a job in themselves. From the start of the year, say Swali starts playing really bad. Missing tackles, gets... Dropped, starts playing, had to play New South Wales Cup. And imagine he's been playing New South Cup for, for since round five. Then what? You know, damn for sure that Roosters will start making moves to try and move this guy on. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it's no one talks about the flip of the coin there where yeah. clubs are always or you know, contract don't mean shit, man. Yeah. People are always trying to move people on. When it comes to doing the best for themselves, bro, and clubs look out for themselves. But yeah, there are clubs that are loyal to to certain players, but the players got to back that up as well. They ain't gonna be the loyal. Thing, to... Like these guys talk like there's not a thirty man squad. Mm. It's like if there was another good guy in the team of that thirty, of course they'd be playing. Yes. But there ain't nobody exactly. else. Like they ain't exactly. talk like oh, this kid, this kid, like this kid can go play somewhere else. Then if they had someone in that thirty roster, they would have been gone. Kid, exactly, they would have kicked, kicked them out. So really, like. talking about those kids, like oh yeah, and he's out of form, like out of form compared to some other teams. But because Roosters are quite cutthroat. But, yeah. They're known for that. Yeah, yeah. The, the assistant coach he signed for the Storm. Um, sorry, bro, I forgot his name, but he was a um, uh, ex player. He signed for the Storm for next year oh, to go right. be an assistant to um, yeah, yeah. Bellamy. Who oh, they dropped him. They dropped him straight away. Yeah. Well, what about yeah. the poor bloke and his family? And you know, that's right. I don't know yeah, who's announced well. his contract, but you're bang on the money deals. If Swali had another Joker um, coming up, yeah, coming on his heels, on yeah. his heels, they would have said, you know, if you want to go Wallabies, piss off now, then, bro. Uh-huh. Exactly. It. But yeah, bro, it's just it's funny, man. Um, uh, good, 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 nice, bro. Good pickup. Yeah. Kind of leads me on to what uh, I don't know um, if you saw the message I seen you, bro, and uh, how how true this leaderboard, uh, not the leaderboard, this um, the letter is about the halves, five eight. Man, yeah, yeah, that. The windows open and your and the cat comes in. Oh, okay. The cat comes in your window. Okay. Yeah. That's my baby's hey. um, birthday yesterday, so. Oh, happy birthday! Say hi to your uncle. Look at that. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, was how old is she turned four? She's Three. five now, bro. Oh, God. Oh, no. But starts um, next year. Starts the new yeah, year. yeah, start next year. Um, yeah, bro, I gave you that yeah, letter. Bro, those, um, those, um, and those are some of these have just been renewed, too. Yeah, That's so this, uh, it was a letter of five eight, highest paid five eights in the competition. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to mention uh, we, had, we had a good talk last week about Luai Yeah. And um, what was interesting yeah. to me, bro, is that um, Whiten is is like one of the highest paid, bro. Is it like one point one point three? Yeah. So is this part of his new deal, though? One point zero five, like current. Munster, definitely deserve it of that one million dollar tag. Yeah. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is that Jack Whiten is here. Yeah, so he's his 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 reasons is to chase that um, ring. Because he's willing yeah. to give up that massive contract and go be a um, a center for the bunnies next year. Um, <clears throat> you look at down that list, Luai's seventh, bro, on six eighty k. Well, he that's why he has to be. Long more than that. Well, yeah, and so I think maybe he's happy. Like that's the thing. As much as he can go go to market, surely there's enough room to wriggle room to get him up to at least nine. What? Oh, I don't. I don't know if he can. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, at, at the Panthers, surely yeah, they mate. can upgrade him to about nine hundred. I don't know, bro. They're they're upgrading a lot of contracts in their team. Um, I think for nine he'll stay, man. But 
can they fit him at nine, bro? I don't know the ins and outs of what what players being paid over there, bro. But I know, um, I I know the prop um, Fisher Harris was oh, was on yeah, big yeah. money, man. I think he's fucking close to a mil, man. Right? Yeah, Eight nine hundred thousand. Just resigned on um, Dylan Edwards. Yeah, as well. I saw that one recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> John Schuster, he's fifth, bro. Yeah, yeah John Schuster's um, 800K. 800K. And so that's his new deal to be carry on, but yeah. likely to move into um, into a, an edge or, or a lock role, eh? It's a lot of money for uh, a forward. Or... It'll be interesting. I think with, um, who, who's coaching Manly next year? Seabold. He's sticking with Seabold. I reckon, man, if he can change, because I guess you, you look at as the game changes, things need to change. So, man, it's just a, like they talk about him needing to get a bit more solid in D. But again, like he could probably change the whole way the game's played. Mm. Pretty much running three five eights out there in your field, running a muck and just having someone like DCE conducting. DCE can play pretty much right in the middle and have these two just running a muck either side. Payton Haas is another one who's um, looking for that big payday, eh? We mentioned previously. But you um, look at the team today, he'll stay with the Bronx. Bronx got to find the money. Yeah. Somehow. They got to well, find the money. They can find the money, but uh, do you think they're willing to pay a million bucks for him? Why not? Why wouldn't you? The thing I mean, is. Who else brings you go for it if he goes away? It just depends who we, and you know what was a big loss for us was um, me personally, um, Herbie man. We lost Herbie. We lost. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And we lost. He's been um, really good, man. Like so unassuming when he came into the team. Right, um, and he's been solid <clears throat> since he arrived. So, like, and he's more consistent than Catoni was. Yeah, so yeah. He, well, he's yeah. That's the thing. Like Catoni, everyone knew Catoni as he was coming in. Yeah, a lot of hype. Herbie got kind of came on the other side as a. And he's I, I heard friend. nothing, he's probably, and man, he's been solid every yeah. game. Just consistent, always just running his lines, doing his job. Surely. Been solid yeah. as. I think um, one saving grace for the Broncos is um, they've got a pretty good um, junior system, and um, Benna's coming up, mate. Um, Luffy's son. Um, mm. they got, um, yeah, they got, yeah, they got, they got good a game, bit of depth man. there. So, but, like, again, you know, uh, still unproven, but on on potential, um, they're, they're looking at him to, to fill that role. So, um, yeah, I don't know, bro. As, as, as a Broncos fan, I, I, I'd love for him to stay in, to stay in the team, but not, not if it means losing, losing more players, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. I like cutting some of the other. Yeah. Cause I'm still not sold on Billy Walters, man. I still think with a, with a really <sighs> decent quality nine, who's got good service that we can, and saying that he's been playing well in the last... I was going to say, he's just been playing... He's just kind of turned the corner because Stace can't yeah. stand him, but he's kind of like just... He's, um, he's cut down on his game clock, recently, man. last couple of weeks, like really... Yeah, he was so yeah, like, yeah, looking so, like so a small he, he might... He might be turning into one of the better nines in the game. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's just interesting to me, bro, like... You know, as 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 a blue collar worker, bro, and you look at this and you go, "Fuck, this guy's not worth it." This guy, no, blah blah blah. Yeah. But you got to look in the scheme of things, bro. And with this NRL CBA shit, bro, this it's peanuts compared to other worldwide sports. Compared to AFL, it's peanuts. Compared to cricket, it's peanuts. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The stress on the game. Yeah, NRL athletes go through a lot more physically. Go through a lot more. It's more intense. The sport. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, and just the, yeah, I, I struggle to compare it when I look at a game like soccer and just the fanship and the, the, the follow shop, like, is it still kind of like a, not a hard game to follow, I guess that's the thing, like, makes it easy to watch, it's kind of not as entertaining. Yeah. I, I feel like it's, it's kind of like a, a long game of just seeing the ball go mm. back and forth, I don't know, like, a, not constantly on the edge of my seat, maybe it's just what you grow up around, but. Yeah, I think in terms of the salary caps, um, yeah, one thing to try and market the game, yeah, like you're saying, like this means nothing. So when you go out to other countries and they see the effort that these guys put themselves through and then look at these salaries, it's real hard to kind of encourage them like this is the future for their kids to <laughs> play such a hard game at like a... Yeah, I look at these salaries like and I'm like... Of what 
they could get in another sport. Yeah. I feel like saying to my son, do you want to give soccer a go, boy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, you imagine if some of these these kids, like talented guys, um, were playing, yeah, other codes. Mm. Um, maybe we should bring them in as a section, try and see what codes these guys could actually go play. I think uh, Joey tried to bring that up on the counter, right? <laughs> Can I talk about? Uh, can I mention one thing, bro? Um, because it kind of, it kind of um, weaves into what we just mentioned. Um, there was a sixty-minute program over here, bro. I don't know if it make it over there. Um, but last Sunday, uh, there was a special about um Wally Lewis. And, oh um, yeah, no, yeah, got I saw that man. Early onset of dementia, bro. Yeah, bro. Oh, CTE. CTE. Yeah, which yeah. is, which you know what, man. Um. And uh, man, a lot of these, he's not the first, he definitely yeah. won't be the last, but he's part of that batch of these these guys, you know, yeah, 50s, the old- 60s, 70s, even the 80s and 90s with this game, even up to the 2000s, because really, we've really only been looking at this. Um, um, yeah, only recently, like probably in the last five to six years. Yeah, we've been monitoring uh, yeah. the, um, the head. Oh, yeah, yeah, you think probably five, six years ago, HIA yeah, was. Also HIA or something else. Yeah. Trying to figure out HIA. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, a very so I don't want to dig deep into the CPA because we've, we've, we've talked enough about that. But that's one of the things that the players... Uh, to protect the, well, yeah. It's, see, it's, these are the things that are important. Yeah. yeah. And that's a big gray area too. That's yeah. a, You know, um, sports like the NFL have gone through this where they're trying to mitigate, mitigate like mm-hmm. players' ability to... to, to um, you know, make settlements and, you know, to blame them. It's, it's you weigh it up, bro. You're like, you know, you're, you're competing in a sport where you expect, you know, that this is this is what's going to happen. You're going to you possibly get injured. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but, so, I don't know, I just, I just want to brought it up because it's, it's, it's sad to see um, the results of some of these legends of the game, bro, who's, who's mm-hmm. put league on the map. And uh, you, you can't get as as big as Wally, man. Wally Lewis, eh? Hey? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. And as a hard man of the game, and uh, you look at the game now, and I think it's um, what they're doing is good. Like, I don't think it's a softening of the game. Like, they're getting a, a good balance. Mm. Um, yeah, it might slow down the game and, and the guys milk it. But I think, you know, that's just teething problems. And as they get used to it, like Chicken Wing, you remember that was like a big deal and then – they kind of figured out how to get get it out of the game. So the players are just like every season they just go through it. But I think it's a learning thing, and I mean it's probably good. Like this stuff with Wally, you know, it's probably you know even for him to come out of it early to 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 educate, yeah, you know, and wanting to to make sure he he gets out there. That's especially for like a legend like him, you know, it's probably a bit fuck him, especially something like dementia where it's you mm. get really bad. So good it's on just him for add to... bringing the attention to the. It's just going to add to the parents. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I for the that, game, uh, yeah, the welfare I, of their kids. I think about now when the yeah. kids, um, man, I see some kids and my son's under under nine's team, and then you think to yourself, this guy ain't nine, fucking looks like he's 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at laugh. the same time, you think what it brings to the kids, like, um, you, you take them out of these systems, out of those fears of the, you know, maybe the, the, the five, six percent of players that might go through this, mm. but all the players that get to play this game and in other sports, like what it brings to the entire life, because what are the alternatives if, especially when families don't know other other sports and they kind of move away from these, you know, the sports yeah. they know out yeah. of here, but then have no sports, and then where do the kids end yeah. up? I'll still hang out with these kids down, down the road. Back home. I don't know if that's related to the numbers in Union. But um, uh, rugby league, uh, rugby union participation back home is down, really down. Yeah, compared yeah, to other yeah. sports, basketball's on up, soccer's on up. Um, but well, yeah, and hopefully, factors. hopefully those numbers are just a transfer of kids to sports and not yeah kids leaving the game and doing other stuff because they you know yeah sports. yeah you hope that I, it's I, just I a, a, it's, a transition. Um, I don't know if anyone's it's, it's done the math on because. It's part of the game that we love, especially Islanders. Islanders yeah, yeah. for this game because it's oh, so yeah. natural the physicality of it. But then when you look at the um, the safety, and if you look at kids that you want to play a game, you almost don't want them to get injured, bro. You, 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 it's it's the risk is so big. 
And I think it's, uh, um, yeah, how do you make sure that, because I guess it's, if this, the game needs to continue, then how do you make the the checking more available to the kids that are part of it? Mm. Not just when they get it to the, you know, the NRL, but like, man, Fox, all of these levels, these yeah. boys, like, I played Masters or last Sunday, and got smashed. Like I got felt like I got beaten up, and I'm only making like probably seven tackles max in the whole game. And I'm All saying, right. you get guys like McKinnon, <laughs> but that's at the top level. But you think Fox and that, you know, these guys are, are getting seriously injured. But you know what? What do they say, the doctor? You know, where are the uh, you think of you know you think yeah, of ten year think, career, man. Exactly. You think unless they have something significant that they feel like they need to go do a concussion or go to the A and E. These boys are just going with their mates to go for a drink afterwards. Yeah. So it's like, how do you make sure these kids? So yeah, I think as much as they, and I think that's the big point. Like, get it in these these professionals. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go to the RLPA stuff, but get it into their contracts so that it's it's already available. So when these kids are coming in through the fox, you know, they can go to their GP and go, oh, I play footy. Oh yeah, listen, we got a standard check we do for any good boys playing footy. I'll just do it on you since you're here. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a yeah. good kind of it needs to start somewhere. Cool man. Um I wanna to jump to the uh the Dally M's. They they're gone behind closed doors, so we don't kind of uh know who's up there, what where the ladder's at at the moment. Um just trying to go back to what we had last rounds and just trying to see Yeah, where did it stop? Do you know where it stopped? Uh the last I can see here is round twelve, but I might yeah, that's the the last I see for Delhi M's. Unless we go back. I've seen something. Um, well, I just had a look here from twenty second of May. I don't know if that was the last time or not. But twenty second of May, um, I got a top five. What do we got there? Um, okay, it was Haas on thirty points, Cleary on twenty seven, uh, Grant and then Hines. Oh, has only got the top five. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cleary. Yeah, Cleary <clears throat> judging on that, I think Cleary's would fallen out, way fallen out and, from and that. And, um, John Johnson at that time was was on twenty two points. He was like tenth. He was definitely been coming up. Yeah, who else was there? Haas, Cleary, Hines, um, Grant, Walsh, Latrell, Ben Hunt, Walker, Edwards, Johnson. Oh, right. So if I was going to take a pot, a pot shot in the dark, I'd, I'd say Haas, Grant, and maybe Sean Johnson up there in the top three. Oh, really? I'd probably say SJ Edwards and, yeah, and Haas. Or, yeah, actually. Nah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't really paid much attention to Grant. Um, I think he kind of, yeah, after that orange period, he had a bit of a few issues there too. Just coming back, I think those games, Melbourne struggled. The man I think, um, given the fact that the Broncos have uh, won majority of their games, I think Payne Haas, would, he's always the, you know, he's always one of the best performers in the team, so he'll definitely be scoring heavily. He'll be definitely up there come um, come by the end of Daily M's, bro. He could possibly be the best, the first prop to win that award, man. Oh, be a bit cool. Would he be the first Samoan to win that award? I think so. Tell him. Probably, yeah, actually. I can't recall any, um, or oh, for that matter, Islanders. Oh, no, nah, two of us are chic. Two of us are chic. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry, Roger. Sorry, Roger. <clears throat> yeah, that'll Speak- be a good, um, speaking yeah. of Roger. Um, bro, what about your Warriors next year, bro? You got him, Man, you got him, and you've got. Well, look at your spinals. You've got him. You've got the Maori uh, Martin to Martin to Martin. come in, and yep. you've also got the also um. Uh, oh, wait for you, Harris um, Tavira. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's who had a break? Chanel. They signed him again. But I, I love this guy. Metcalf, what he's been doing for years, man. He's fast. That's why it was one of my selections, maybe. So, I mean, this going to be hard for, um, you know... Uh, Spoil for choice, choice can't be, can sometimes be a problem. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a, it's a good problem to have. Came on this podcast um, 
Yeah, yeah, I saw him with uh, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. And uh, I don't know if he was trying to be humble or not, saying, oh, he's coming across as a centre. But, bro, if you're the coach, man, one-on-one with Nickel Clockstar. And I love I love this guy's um, his heart and his, um, you know, he's always given it a hundy. But, mm. man, if you just compare uh, the skills at fullback and the experience, fucking RTS is up there, man. He's well over him. Don't yeah. you think? Oh, look, I, I think cause Chanel bring. I mean, um, Chance brings that effort. And so him and you've got to let them both on the field. Um, I know, but who'd be your fullback? You've got to start with so Roger. I, I think, oh, nah, so I, really? I like Chanel. I mean, I like, and maybe it's just been this year, but you look at Chance, like, just quite solid on D at the back. Like, nothing really gets through, and he's saved a lot. Archie You'd pick him over Roger same. at fullback. So on D? And then when we play attack, so they might might try and play like a two way. <laughs> You're on the fence. So that we, You're on the fence. So we we need to be like a, a Joseph turns. Manu and let so let, have turns. let Roger get the the ball as much as he can, but from a, like a, a closer to the ruck kind of position. But so where would you what what jersey would he be wearing? RTS. I'm happy for him at centre. Defending in the front line. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. yeah. I okay, think he's okay. safe for there. I this, like Chance at the back. This is a, this is a Dally M winning fullback. Oh, he's going to be a Dally M winning centre now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you, you, you're putting someone quality like Roger in the centre for Charles. Well, just the thing. Like, I guess Charles Roger's on. the quality that you can just put him wherever you want. He's a waste of that centre, bro. Don't you think Pompey is better at centre? <laughs> hell, hell no. I'm expecting Broncos to get desperate and pull Pompey into their team. When uh, Mariner gets injured, Mariner's going to get injured, then they'll be like, what? man, they we them, need though. someone. They I know them. we did. You guys will pay the exit. You guys will pay the exit clause. <laughs> um, mm. Nice, nice good call, uh, Dalians, bro. Um, try July. We, we we finished try July, man. Um, we haven't really talked about it throughout it, but man, what have you what have you enjoyed? What are some of your your highlights throughout the month? So the so ones that start stand out. The cricket one definitely stands out. Raiders, because mm. that was a good one. The fucking there was half the yeah, team involved in that one, and that one made um worldwide news. Uh, yeah, right, because it was, it was after the ashes, the ashes and shit. <laughs> uh, I'll put that one in my top. Five. Um, Tariva on the weekend. Fuck, he had a good one, bro. Did you see his one? Oh, no. What did he come out of? The Panthers, uh, the Fiki. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. he scored the try. And then he got the um, he got the ball and started um, doing the cover. Oh, and he followed the cover. With... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the man. I started doing the cover and uh, I was drinking the ball. Um, that was uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, the girls have been good. They did the bowling. You see, they, they took did it the to bowling. the next level on the weekend. Bro. <laughs> hey, I saw they did like a um, like a locomotion. Yeah, bro. They all lined up. <laughs> the you know with that one, this is a bit unfair because the girls can have a little fuck alo with that. Yeah, if you, if the guys did that, yeah, so they'll, they. they'll be on news. They'll be fucking brave, yeah, especially when your team's for your inga and like still got your celebration. Yeah, like, oh, it's God. like these guys. Like, come on, man. Because it's, it's a real um, it's a real Mika thing to do. I think the boys get away with it now because it's for um, yeah for the dry July thing. Yeah, it's for um, it's ra- raising funds and, mm. and pick ups to Daniel Anderson, bro. He's he's um, mm. a part of that. He's getting part of that. that fun. They made a lot of yeah, money for his recovery. Too. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good cause, man. I didn't realize like how well they've done over the last few years. They did the uh, Mossy Masoy one last year. Yeah. Um, like, uh, there, was that, there was one that Bully Waters scored and he tried to do a little selfie with the ball yeah. but um, against uh, Bulldogs so he tried to do a little selfie with the ball and then uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Ray Money from um, Doggies hit it out of the, the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess, dude, yeah, yeah but 
Um, I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna call it. I would say um, Katoni and uh, Katoni and uh, Rish Walsh. Rish Walsh, their backflips. Just ain't no one doing backflips. They just bar the backflip like nothing. Oh, just the, bro, yeah, because the athleticism. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I um, like nothing, man. Israel, Israel man did a funny one too, bro. He did the old score to try pretend like he was hurt. And then yeah. the Siva, the Siva afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that cricket one and, and Tariva's, um, Tariva's, um, bro. But what about like if you go like all time? I still remember Fafili back in the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coconut. Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It's coconut one. Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought like the Warriors missed the chance. Like they didn't really get into it. They did a few, but didn't really um. Bring back any of the old school Warriors styles. I think a lot of those players are still like getting used to scoring the tries this year. <laughs> <laughs> Not used to this environment of uh, celebrating and uh, getting out uh, of there. Uh, fuck, no, it is, uh, yeah, you, I think that's no, a, a good thing for them. What about uh, you, bro? Did I think for me, skills? like I'll probably take it right back to near the beginning. It was probably one of the ugliest worms I've ever seen. Um, from Lim, uh, Lim Willow from the Dolphins. Yeah. Remember early on they started doing the try July and the man what tried to do a worm. He tried to do the worm, but he's <laughs> like, <laughs> just because he's massive. <laughs> yeah, like Tedesco <laughs> did it like a few weeks ago. But yeah, he did it like, I was like, still, that's the ugliest worm I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Lim Willow gets it from way back then. Um, special mention to Philip Sami, bro. He's hot. So he's going good, man. Mm. When he did his, uh, when he did his Connor walk after his try. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. That's right. That's right. But then he just looks far. But you see the one on the weekend. He just did like a fusu pose, and, <laughs> and then just started doing extra things. Like some of this guy's got no celebration. He just wants to try and anything. Yeah, and then he started doing extras. Like, oh, this guy just make it up. Like, please, just give him the money for charity. <laughs> Um, yeah, so fun, um, good cause, um, yeah, so I'm enjoying it, I like that we... I hope the players keep it. going with it, man. Yeah, hey. yeah, just to kind of, yeah, even if, like, when you're winning, get up, like, why not? Like, yeah, it looks dumb to do, to do that when it's try July, and you yeah. try and do a thing when you're losing, but, yeah, when you're winning, get on top. Nice, horse. Hey, I wanted to, um, quickly, just looking at some of the games last weekend, um, just watching um, some of the movements of Reese Walsh, but also um, Alofi Khan Pere- uh, Pereira from Titans. Some just the speedsters, bro. Mm. Speedsters in the game, and I was just thinking, man, let's um, let's break down your your top eight. Who gets those eight lanes? Oh, in a race, for a race, yeah, bro, for a race so from, from twenty twenty three. Yeah, you used to do it. Yeah, I saw some old videos. Let's bring it back. Yeah, I remember. Um... Well, if these guys can do a flip mid-season, surely they're allowed to just have a race at the end of the season. Do you remember that warrior, Lee Odin Ryan? Odin Ryan. The name rings a bell. This, this goes back. He was a speed star. He, he, he wasn't the best winger going around, but he had pace. I think I think he was... I don't know if he won it that year, but he was definitely... Oh, and they were oh, one no, of those race I think, I think there was a race. I think the most recent one was... Jared Haynes. Um, oh, that recent. Greg Inglis, all these guys had a race, and it was like in the proper, um, it was in a proper, like a track, and um, fuck, I forgot who won it, it was, wasn't a big name that won it, but um, anyway, bro, uh, sorry, it was, uh, I digress, but, um, what are we talking about now, if we're talking about eight lane, 100, 100 meter races, yeah, man, see, well, you mentioned Reese Walsh, he's got acceleration, but I don't know if he's got the top pace. You don't reckon he's out and out all the way well. to the end? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It looks impressive. Similar to Man Made, but they they cover ground, I'm sure. <laughs> well, uh, they'll definitely they'll definitely be leading that race in the first 30 metres, 20 metres. But, I mean, some names that come automatic, Saab, Saab will be yep. up there. Cola? Right, Saab in there. Yep. Cola's um, actually, um, they were... They were talking yeah, about him as a, um, a, a junior, yeah, a junior um, state champ. So he he'd be there. Um, Khan Pereira. Khan Pereira. Bro, he is. He looks fast, man. Um, 
Terivia? Uh, Terivia? 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 See, you gotta have a ficky in there, man. Yeah, <laughs> 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 man. Yeah, these ficky got natural pants, man. No maju, no maju in there, man. Fuck, maju, he's like he's a tough man on the wing, bro. Yeah, hard up. I don't know if he can oh, foot it with these guys. Um, oh, Sloan. What about Sloan from the Dragons? Oh, Dragon definitely Sloan. Right? He'll He's be probably the fastest in that team. Um, yeah. But the Fox, mate. The Fox still in the... Oh, sorry, bro. The Fox and the Hammer. Fox and the Hammer. Oh, yeah, the Hammer. I'm a shameless, man. He's... Um, um, I how many is that, man? We've got, we got two, five in there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Got nine... Got nine with Reese and Mam in there at the moment. Is Mam well, I'd have to man. I'd have to um, get rid of Man for um, surely. Oh, what, the, what about the Warriors, bro? You're I'm just trying to think. Maybe Mikaf. Mikaf looks like our fastest at the moment. Oh, then 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 uh, Watini is losing it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I can't tell with Watini. He just gets those good breaks. But it's like, never like a proper top one pace, on one. he looks fast, top pace. Yeah, when he goes on an angle, eh? So. Yeah. Um. So you wouldn't have him in there? <sighs> Maybe I'd pull out Taruva if I'm putting in uh, Watini. Really? Nah, Taruva's faster than him, man. You reckon? Um, I reckon so. I'm trying to look at this list and see who... Um, what, I reckon ha, um, sub for me. It's fucking those long legs. If uh, if he was um, not injured, if he was uh, fit and firing, you'd have to put Turbo in there as well. Man, yeah, Turbo would have definitely been on this list. If he was injured, <clears throat> yeah, uh, but Cola, Cola definitely. Uh, I think for the Broncos, um, just just by looking looking at him, the way he covers the ground, I think. Um, Lappy's boy, um, Dean uh, Marin, oh, looks fast, yeah. faster than um, because I think it's so yeah, maybe it's just because of the size that he looks faster, just mm. that sleek, and he's got a good, but run. yeah, bro, that would be a good race, man. That'd be a good race, yeah. Oh, I, I put my money on man. some. I was just thinking, Peps isn't even in there because he's injured too. Pax Pappenhausen, oh. Definitely be in there if he was far, yeah. fit. Yeah, yeah, if he was fit. Man. I think he's not far off making his um, debut as well. Or not? Yeah, debut. that would be a good race, man. Not debut, but you know what I mean. Return. Yeah, yeah, return to form. Cool, us. Um, all right, let's just jump into those games of the week last. Um, well, what stood out for you from the the <clears> last? <throat> week? Um. I was impressed with um, the Knights, bro. The Knights oh. are um, <clears throat> the Knights are a little That's sneaky to make the eights. Um, yeah, I was I was doing a little um, predictor, and I actually I actually got them coming in at fifth force. I can see them um, winning majority yes. of the of the, of the later games. I think they're showing. Their own? Well, uh, they definitely got the points in them, bro. I think they got. Um, I think they're just showing a bit more starch on on defense. And I think their spine's a good combo now with Gamble, and they got a good hooker there. Um, the halfback there, um, good cooking game. So it allows um, it allows uh, Ponga to just yeah, yeah. run right, bro, and score them points. So um, <clears throat> yeah, what a time to have a run, man. Yeah, the yeah, uh, really they were good. impressive. The um, Storm, I knew they'd come out and. Um, and win their game, um, and impressively too. Um, yeah, like I wasn't sure about them, like just clicking, and that you know, um, Stace talked about their spine being quality, but man, against the Eels, the Eels are in trouble. The Eels are in trouble, all right, bro. Um, I've actually got them missing the eight, man. Yeah, we did um, end up in the letter because they got a, they got a they got a rough they got a rough run. um yeah yeah they got a real hard run home. to the line. Um, Broncos and Panthers are. Uh, I think they'll stay where they are. Also, um, Panthers had a pretty predictable win over over the um, Sharks, who have got falling out. You yeah, got the Sharks yeah. in there. I got the Sharks falling at eleventh by the end of the week, mm. uh, season. 
Regular, yeah, man. Yeah. So I got um. This is what I got, bro. Um, I got Panthers first, Broncos yep. second, Warriors third, Storm fourth. So I've got that top four staying as is. And then yeah, I got Knights, Knights, Raiders, Rabbitohs, Cowboys. So um, so Sharks fall out for me, and um, and who else? Who else is in there that falls out? Um, Eels, the Eels, Eels fall, fall out for me. I um, I just think they got a bit too much of a tough road home, and um, I know that I'm um, I put far more on my face again because I called them. <laughs> They made a little bit of a comeback recently, you know? But. Yeah. Well, this, I wasn't really convinced on their, their messy game they had against the Eels. Um, they got um, Dylan um, Brown, quick fingers, come back. But <laughs> like I said, it's a tough it's a tough road for them. They've got um, yeah. some hard games. And that's, uh, yeah, I think you really let the team down. Like, um, it's been spoken about on, on other on chats. I don't want to go on about it, but... um. Yeah, just real untimely, just because the, the origin period, you know, Mitch Moses did so good in the, the game two, it was, it was hard not to pick him again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think Gus being pulled in for his for his far more minutes that he got really just just let the eels down. Although, that, that's, they, oh no, yeah, the, the Warriors, yeah, the Warriors beat them in that, that I the, great um... team they had, and that's when the Warriors got kind of on a good run. And the Eels, you know, without Dylan Brown, that, that made a big difference for their season, that game. Yeah. The Sea Eagles are over the hunt, and uh, I think last time we were on, I, I told Roch that it was possible for them to make the eight, especially mathematically, but they have to win. Um, they got well, they got to win one out of two games against top eight teams, and they got Warriors and Broncos um, that are top eight. And I think the other three games are... Easy teams, yeah, yeah. but I don't see them winning either of those games. Um, Warriors at home and uh, Broncos at home, so this is going to be too much of a tough ask. Even though well. they're they're um, bringing it home strong, mm-hmm. and they're tenth at the moment. Um, I just think that the Knights, out of the teams out of the eight at the moment, the Sharks will fall out for the Knights. Yeah, I had a follow. Uh, Coming in the same eight, uh, just a few different orders, but um, yeah, I think I my my predictor fell the same way. Um, just the Knights picking up a few more games. Um, yeah, and then it looks like the it must be just change of order because the the teams in the top eight beating each other um, differently. Looks like, but um, must be similar. The Eels, Sharks, and Manly all missing out. Um, man, it's going to be an interesting run, especially that um. Yeah, that Broncos game this week is going to be a real tester for both of you guys mm. um, and, and kind of really dictate what's going to happen. Sorry, man, this cat. That's, um, yeah, oh, I, I went off my heart well, on that one. I don't think dictate what's going to happen, but I, I think speaks a lot to to the mentality of the teams for the Broncos. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, just a, a team that's kind of on the ropes that you've got to beat and they're kind of on the up. So you know, you got to be up for it. you got to be ready. Um, so I think that's the thing that's going to really maybe just shake a few people, doubters of yeah. the Broncos, to, well, to at, miss this week. Looking at last week's game, uh, I think that was the upset of the round when the Titans beat them, beat the Cowboys. So that's not going to do the Broncos any favours. Um, it's, it's, it's a must-win game for the Cowboys. But um, for their run home of my predictor, I've got them losing that game but winning every other game, the Cowboys. Oh, the Cowboys? Um, Is that yeah. their run home? Yeah, yeah. So I, I've I've got them just sneaking into the to the eight. So it's a crucial game for the Cowboys, um, just to, just to stay within reach because they're they're just clinging on to eighth spot. And they don't have the best um, um, differential or oh, forty eight, but you know the Knights have got plus seventy two. So um, and the Sharks have got plus seventy. So um. For for both teams, I think it's going to be high 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 intensity match, man. It's going to be almost like semi final um, level, bro. Um, it's a good it's a good game for the Broncos to. I don't know. It's I've been happy with the way they've been winning games, but I I still don't think they've put together an eighty minute performance. And and uh, come finals time, you need to play eighty minutes to really, 
you know, to be a team to beat. Um, so I'm picking the Broncos, man, not by much. It's But the, you have to think Cowboys are favourites for that one, eh? Because it's over mm-hmm. there, Saturday afternoon. Looks like the game yeah. around. Especially like a real disappointing <clears throat> game. Um, against the Titans last week, yeah, yeah. And just goes to show the Titans, bro, what they're capable of, man. This is pissing me off because yeah. I've backed them a lot this year, man. Yeah, I had them just missing as well. So yeah, they, they, oh, they actually they end up on twenty six points. And it wasn't like the Cowboys played bad. The Titans, man, for a good twenty minutes, bro. The Cowboys just couldn't keep them out, man. The Titans yeah, got it was like pretty solid, yeah, decent attack. And they 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 beat them without um. Tino as well, so. Yeah, was well, um is Tino? I saw him again on the sidelines. There was he um injured. Still, yeah, he's still out injured, bro. So um this, oh they they're back on twenty two points. You'd have to think that even them winning all their games, it's gonna be hard for them to make it in. Yeah, exactly. Um, man, the Panthers just looking really good, eh? Like just Cleary coming back and um. Uh, yeah, I guess probably against the uh, real struggling Sharks. Um, but man, they're looking the good again. Yeah, they. Uh, it's a it's a hard it's a hard game to judge, but Panthers were on top of their game, bro. They just mm-hmm. showed why they won the last two years. Um, yeah. Sharks didn't really offer anything on on attack, but at the same time, the, the Panthers just shut them out. Um, and the the form of Cleary is gonna put everyone on notice. Or the man just. Had all this time off, come yeah. back and just kick the hell out of that ball, man, and and put put the sharks on under pressure. Um, sharks lost their fullback uh, early, so that wouldn't have been a help. But they're playing with a team under confidence, bro, and yeah, and the and the Panthers are just they're just um doing enough. I think that you can see them like slowly, slowly picking up their game, man. Just building it like it's almost yeah. like they're um. Yeah, I guess after these two, because you think that the year before these two wins, they got to the final and kind of learned the lesson there and then went on to win twice. And so now there's almost like they're just going through the motions of learning how to build a season, mm. learning how to, you know, because you, you think, was it last year or the, the first year they won it? When they were on that ridiculous run of wins in a row, like trying to just get a record of, you know, just no losses. Um, so they've kind of gone from that high to just being able to manage seasons. They, you know what they've the really done well really to um, get their game back to to where it was last year. After, yeah, yeah. after taking just a real good rhythm, to, after taking a little while to to figure out their game without uh, Kurosawa and um, mm-hmm. Kika. Um, and Kika, yeah, Kika won. was good. Eh? back for the, the yeah, the, he was a big out for them. But I I, I think with, with the second rounds that they've got, um, they've just kind of managed to just. Um, Still be, still be, still do enough to fucking. Uh, I don't think one. I think uh, I'll steal a quote from uh, Gus Gordy on one of his Channel Nine programs. I don't think they got too many points in them, Panthers. I don't mm. think they can smash teams off the park in terms of their attack, um, because they're very um, regimented. Today eh? they're quite um, with um, between. Uh, Cleary and between um, Yale, they got almost like a system like attack, mm-hmm. you know, where they 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 try and tire teams out. You know that Cleary likes yeah, to yeah, that's bring thing is, guys like, inside, bring guys yeah, inside. Yeah. They like just that arm wrestle, battering you, yeah, battering you, that's up, right. and just get so, you into that routine and then it. go wide. Yeah, yeah, and just and it's, yeah. So I think that's one thing I, I I did pick up on like just over the last few weeks. Um, and I don't know if it's, it's an actual observation, but just the ability of the the Bronx to break out a game anywhere in the field. I think that's yeah. The well, you look at that top eight. eight. You look at Broncos, Warriors, Storm, even the yeah. Rabbitohs and the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. These guys got points in them. These guys who like you know three, four tries down with twenty minutes to go, they won't be scared. You know they they yeah, they you got can find a, a way enough around firepower to do it. It's it's the Panthers' um, defense that's separated them from the whole competition. Yeah, yeah. They give you nothing, man. They give you nothing. Yeah. It's whether so, you can just will that storm mate to just keep battering on the door until. Yeah. Because if you get turned off away enough times, yeah. So it's real. Um, yeah, I guess that's where they're talking about, like the the Warriors' resilience earlier. In yeah. The so so whatever like, team how do you keep doing that and holding on and not give up and then 
get scored against and then drop your head and then there, there goes the game. So it's That's like, it, bro. We'll if they're, they're going to lose, if Japan's going to lose, it, it'll take a team to just play out of their skin, you know, out of the uh, skin, yeah. bro. But like I said, there's plenty of teams who've got who've points got the them, yeah, yeah, points to score more them. points than them. They can, can they match Panthers on defence? Not at the moment. I think there's a clear um, light of day between Panthers defence and everyone else. For the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Storm. You so say you touch on the Storm, so that should be a good game because that is their game uh, this week. Possible preview of the first game of the final um, Friday night, man. Storm Panthers. So this will be a real good test. I yeah. think both teams, they probably don't talk about the table, but somewhere in the background, they've got that in the mind that this might be a preview of what they've got to look forward to in about a month's time. Oh, yeah, also, you look at that battle on the number seven. Uh, like I said, I think I think Cleary's probably got the upper hand when it comes to uh, navigating the team around, the kicking game. But um, uh, Jerome Hughes' uh, ball playing and his, his, his attack, when he's, when he's hitting the line, when he's taking it up to the line, uh, his running game is the best in the business, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so talking, uh... I think it comes down to the pack. If, if the Storm can um, give Harry Grant quick play of the balls, they're going to be dangerous. Also. Between Harry Grant, Munster, and Jerome Hughes, Bro, it's 50-50 between them and the Oh, and yeah, people. and then you, know, you think when Nelson comes back too, bigger so far, man. Yeah, I, I mean, think they got the better yeah. the better spine. Um, more points than them. But um, can can the, can the Storm match their forwards? Can the Storm match on defence? You know, can, you know, that's 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 where it's at. And almost, yeah, you know, I think I mentioned it last time. They almost play like a Storm game. Um, a few years back, you know, when yeah, uh, Kronk very, and, uh, yeah, and Slater yeah. was playing for them. Yeah. Really just regimented. Like but... day, you just smash on the front door for ages. Yeah. And then when you get tired, you just... <clears> well, that, that back three do a lot yeah. of work, bro. They do enough work so that Leota and... Um, yeah, because it's a, a lot of... Yeah. ...can have fresh legs. That. Yeah, yeah. So they're the just fence. banging guys on D. Yeah. And running hard. And then, you know, those guys will run those first few meters. Yeah. I don't know. Also, I'm um, I'm I'm gonna go out on them and, and pick an upset here, bro. Storm yeah, yeah. upset. I think so. I think Storm, uh, especially for their season, and to kind of give them that Storm confidence to run into a final. I think this is the kind of game that Bellamy targets for you know, for, and mm. I guess coaching wise, it's a. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. You know, Bellamy's kind of, um, you know, he's been bandied around. Might want to move, might want to stay. So it's kind of one of those. Um, has he stayed too long? I don't know. Who hey, Bellamy? Yeah, you can't blame Bellamy for the way the team's gone. But man, it hasn't been the storm of, hasn't been the usual storm team. Like, yeah, they're still coming fourth, but man, that's not the storm of of seasons past. They're missing a lot from those. Um, the Bromwich brothers leaving. Well, just yeah, goes to show how good. That yeah. just goes to show how good the Panthers and the Broncos are this year, man. Those are really the well, only yeah, two teams too. above them that are consistently doing better. So um, this year's got a, is a really good comp this year. Also. And we're, yeah, we're, we're down to the last coach. five rounds and the makeup of that outside the top four. It's still unknown, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be a really good, and I guess that again. This is all assuming that the Warriors go on the run that they've had. So you look at the teams and it should be a straightforward. Um, but yeah, I guess as a long Warriors fan, you hope this isn't like where they start to rear the, the old Warriors head and start going backwards and dropping a few games they shouldn't drop. And next thing you know, we drop out of the four, you know, and all of a sudden... You oh, know, I just, think that... Oh, I mentioned it last time and, you know, there also was... Um... They also was trying to label me as a hater, but but I think the Warriors <laughs> don't have enough of those games that's going to test them at like final with footy. You mm. know they have a comfortable run in, so they have to play. They have they have to like not allow these bottom teams to drag them down to their level. Yeah, and they I think to... that's, that's, that'll be the test is like how yeah. they play those games because it's yeah. It's easier to kind of come in with a mindset, want to do some stuff that you're going to learn from, 
and you just end up in an ugly game because you're just playing off some guys who are just fale on me, like what Roger said last weekend. Real. And uh, the only reason you're, why... you're scrapping away, winning a real scrappy game, but learning nothing from it and being undercooked when we get to the, the final The only reason why I wouldn't put them as premiership contenders because because I, I kind of have only three in that category at the moment, the uh, Panthers, Broncos, and Storm. Is that because the Warriors have only really won against Raiders and the Sharks in top eight at the moment. They haven't they haven't produced a win against either of those three teams. Even the Rovados. They haven't beat the Warriors. So it's, it's not enough evidence to suggest that they can beat those teams yet. You know? Mm. Yeah, I take your point. <laughs> you don't agree? No, no, no. I agree. I think, yeah, we haven't won against them. So, yeah, the history doesn't provide enough evidence to, to say that we should win. Um, but I guess on form, like a lot of those teams, like the Storm, the Rabbits, form hasn't been where it should be. Um, and saying that, though, the Panthers' form is yeah is red hot. Like, and, and I guess that's the thing. Like, looking at, again at the way the Panthers played last week, there are still gaps. And so they've still got stuff they can tidy up. If, I think if the that's Panthers a scary and, um, thing. Like, if you see them playing a perfect game, then you go, cool, that's the best they can get. And we still got some improvements. Whereas you see they've still got little things in their game they need to fix yeah. up as well. So that's what well, uh, well, I was going to say. The Panthers and Broncos have a few teams that's worthy of an upset against them. And so if they drop some of these games, Panthers and the Broncos, it opens the door for the Warriors to be more in premierships. Um, and that can happen if they win all their games. And, and I think, out. yeah, that, that speaks more to, I guess, the well, like, I guess the, the evidence that the your teams are showing as well don't give me evidence mm. enough to say the Warriors can beat you guys because you guys the aren't why I mentioned, dropping those games either. Yeah, the reason why I mentioned that is that if, if the Warriors do become minor premiers, then they'll definitely, I'll, I'll be the first one to say that they can be premiership contenders because the Warriors will... F- Two home games to start? Yeah, yeah, back-to-back. They only need two home games. So if you finish one, if you finish first place, right? We get the home game. You've got a home game first up. You have a We get a home game again. You get another home game, and then you're straight into the prelim final. Mm -hmm. And anyone that makes the prelim final, you're a contender, because it only (laughs) takes one game to get to the grand final. But there's a thing, like, we still get two chances at home. Because if we came first, if we lost that, we still get the home against the, the bottom one that wins. Yeah, yeah. So we get the home, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I guess that's what's good. Like, the Warriors have had a bye. I think it's come at a good time. Um, and they've got the game coming up this week. And I think it's a, a good test for them, trying to come off a bye, get back into the, the footy, try and put a plan in place. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think their bye came at the right time. Um Good to go into a bye with a win as well. Um, and then the march home should be fairly straightforward, but off a hot Titan from last week. Um, should be a win. Two weeks ago, it should have been a win. No one expected the Titans to do what they did to the Cowboys last week. Um, and like you said, the, the Cowboys weren't far off. Too. You know, It's not like they played a terrible game. Um, so this should be a really good one for the Warriors coming back in. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's good that the Titans got up too, so that we're, you know, there's no so, excuse for the Warriors to go and complacent either. It's going to be awesome game, It's a, uh, um, you know what the funny thing is, it's a, uh, um, Titans winning is going to make it interesting, but it's outside of uh, Mount Smart, it's the closest thing the Warriors have to a home game, bro, because Kiwis over here flock to that game, also. There's a lot of Kiwis over here on the GC. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And um, it'll yeah, be close to the show. I heard them. Um... Yeah, I'm sure I could hear like Warriors chance at that ground. I was like, oh, bro, shit. it's close to sold out. So, um, I'm picking the Warriors for that one. They can definitely win that one. Um, like I said, it's dangerous because Titans have nothing to lose. And yeah, especially like, after the back of last week too. Well, that's a decent game, decent win against uh, the Cowboys, who the last month has probably been the form team. Eh? So, I'm looking forward to that game, bro. Um, if if the Warriors can win and win handsomely, bro, then no, I'll, I'll be the first one to support them. Yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Um, still no Tino again, so Tino's out again, mm. um, which is good. So um, so they did well last week as well to win without Tino. Um, 
But uh, yeah, that should be a good one for the Warriors to get up against. Um, and really just kick off their, their run home. I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think they should be uh, running strong in that. Nice, Hoos. Hey, um, I wanted to quickly jump into our... I don't want to, but I, we should talk about our, our NRL <laughs> draft, mate. Our NRL yes, draft. let's do that. You, uh, let's do that. We are heading into the final week. I kind of got that wrong, man, but you are sitting pretty at the top of the ladder, mate. How's it feel? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, and I, I just want to um, start off by explaining to um, our listeners out there who aren't familiar, but this is for the Isaiah Calava Memorial Cup. This is for Uso's um, Memorial yeah, Cup, and um, nice. there's 10 of us this year. And uh, we're nearing, um, this is the last game of the round, isn't it, Uso, before the yeah, playoffs? Yeah, yeah, so this playoffs? doesn't run at the same rounds as the season yes. regular for the, the NRL. It actually finishes a few weeks early. So this week coming is the actual last round. Mm. And the winner at the end of this week will be the minor premier. And then we move into a... Uh, top six playoff we've only got yep. 10 in our pool um that's right so it's we end up playing uh 21 21 games with a couple of buys in there and um and so far coming into the last round mate the Valle bronx uh yours truly's team uh, are leading the way bro uh, we're on um first place with 13 ones 13 wins six losses uh mike j uh god squad one uh second place uh, Sam won Mandingo. Mandingo, mate. Stubborn's team's third place. Who's this guy up there? Mate, this guy has been like really. Um, and you know, if you look at his points scored 11,313 points, it's quite down, bro. It's probably the fifth best point scored. But um, somehow he's managed to string enough eat ass wins, <laughs> old Mandingo. So he's sitting on third place, 12 wins, seven, seven losses. And uh, Clutch City officials rounding up the top four. Damn, man, I haven't really, the team in the top. Haven't really noticed them too much. Um, because out, out of a team of ten, it's almost like a mediocre record. He's got ten. He's ten and nine, so he's he's probably the best out of the shit teams, really. Uh, we got Cameron Saw, Madden, All Madden at fifth. The Ike guys, Danny at six. These nuts, Tanavellini uh, at seventh. Um, and I'll give you a little um explanation after I round up the, the, the list to see what happened because bro, you're leading uh, like after five, six rounds, bro. Yeah, yeah, I want to um, address that when we get to it, man. But uh, you're at seventh Golden Elise. Uh Sam Sean Lips team. So it's the disappointment of the season. Yeah, it's good. Um, build-ups. The way he was concentrating when he came to the This year or next, um the name of Stacy's team, they're running it's at nine. Shot. That's a shock and, of ninth. He's, and I don't know what's happened. He's a much better player than that to be sitting at ninth. Mate, sure and he's, he was, last year was quite active. I, yeah. I, I just think he hasn't bothered opening up his account. <laughs> I think he the injury, think the injury during the, uh, but, <laughs> the wise guy's season really set him back. But I can't see too many changes in his team. And then we've no got surprises the, there, pulling up the back end of the comp. The ultimate Sea Eagles, um, yeah. managed by... <laughs> Uh, the one and only Roger for a twill hour with six wins, 13 losses. Um, he's gonna take out the Spoony, uh, Spoony Lao. Um, is, did he take it last year as well? Yes, yes, I think you get a special Spoony hey, Lao when you got two years two, in mate. a row. Exactly. So, um, he, he he's, looks, a, he's the Tigers of this comp, mate. I think his problem there, he's like just keeps picking the Manly team, bro. He, he exactly. Just, he no stacks his team of manly what like players score comes what? to the buy and then he's called by. Yeah, so I mean, in this competition, you have to be active, bro. You gotta every week make changes to your team if required. And and Roger, it's it's just like his opinions, bro. He's not willing to do the homework. He's just talking <laughs> So he hasn't done the homework and it showed. Um, yeah. But yeah, so man, in terms of homework, your, man, um, I, I I really oh, struggled oh, with these um. Getting these picks in, the timing. So, um, yeah, I think the bye weeks killed me. Um, and just doing my um, preparation for the podcast kind of overlapped with the cutout of these. Um, uh, All right. Yeah. And that that really killed me a couple of weeks. I had Sean Johnson on the, the bench scoring 90 points. 
Um, not attributing to my score. So a lot of these losses... Like, I think man, you've I, lost 10 games in a row. Is possibly. This only goes back as far as uh, five games, though. And, yeah, this shows my last five. I'm zero from five over the last yeah. five games. So it's a real poor run um, with a really good roster, too. Yeah, I did a dumb thing, though, um, yesterday because I thought... So I could have possibly mate. had one chance to come into the eight, the six. What have you done, mate? Yeah, I, I threw my toys, man, and I shouldn't do that. So maybe well, apologies, um, boys, uh, apologies to the rest of the the Memorial Cup because I I threw well, my well, toys and did a I sale. Hope the boys are listening. I hope the boys are listening, but I have it here, bro. And you've been quite you and Golden Ladies and I guys have some shit going on there. It's like hmm, it's got to be some kind of uh, investigation going on here, bro. But you've let go of a lot of fucking players, bro. You've given um, you gave our guys uh, Nofoluma. You've given him Latrell Mitchell. Um, you've given him uh, Ravalawa. Uh, you, you gave God Squad Cody Walker. Oh, I even um, got the message. Didn't you see the sale sign go up? You see the for <laughs> sale sign? What's going on? Imagine this. Imagine if they did this. Imagine in the NRL, if at the, the last round, they go, oh, look, your teams aren't going to make the eight. Do you guys want to bring any players to uh, Bronx? Who would you pick up? So if you needed to strengthen your team and you're like, oh, we just need a couple players here to finish the season, who would you buy out of the other NRL teams? Well, if, if, could... if I knew you were going to fucking... Um, no, well, put up the first sale sign. You got no, I'll just go Yeah, but uh, Stacey made a good point. So yeah, sorry, boys. I won't do that next year because it gives an unfair advantage to those in the final. Clint Gutherson? Cause... Man. Yeah, this guy might so, have a good run from six you, to. Uh, you fucked up the. Uh, oh, that's you know, all right. He's coming last of the competition. I guys, I guys is coming last, man. It's like uh But you know, I look at the I guys team and I was like, yeah, that's all right. You know, it's not going to do much against the top two, three teams, bro. Um, exactly. Well, well, so good. imagine if you could do this at the NRL comp, like we're saying that top four is the top four. Imagine at this part, like they had in, like a trade window. Where it's just I like think for the, the last 10 games and you just uh, Johnson. Window. He's got Johnson. Who's, uh, Wait, who did he have before? He had... Um, oh, he had I think Townsend he had... Uh, didn't he have Cody Walker? Oh, did he have Cody Walker? Oh, that's all right. It's not a it's pretty fair trade then. I, I might be lying, but... Cody for sure. But anyway, bro, it's, it's basically... Um, me or Mike, bro. Me, or, me and Chitty, um Who's going to win it? So stay tuned, listeners. Yeah, stay tuned. You the Iron stay, Giant stay, stay, more. Um, oh, well, yeah, you're first anyway. So, uh, yeah, minor premiere if you uh, win this week. But, um, yeah, I guess either way, I think if, um, I, if Mike beats me, you still win now. As long as you if, win or no? Nah, yeah, nah. We're on the same amount of wins, so oh, yeah, I've so got to win, win to be sure. Okay, so as long be, as you win, you're sweet. Well, we're both on the same amount of wins. I'm just I've got them by two hundred points in the point points differential. So if we both win and he goes on a magic fucking scores eight hundred points and you score four hundred, then I'm in trouble. Who's he got? Ah, span it. Who's he got any as captain? Yeah, mate, I'm confident, oh, mate. It's in the bag. Captain. So Cameron Shristo, just keep hold of my hundred bucks there, mate. <laughs> Wait till I come home. Nice, Us. All right, bro. Um, cool, man. Let's wrap it up. Let's have a look at the straw for uh, next week and see what you're liking. And uh, let's go down to the TAB tomorrow. Place this bet. All right. Um, tomorrow night we kick off with Manly and the Roosters. How you seeing that, Us? I'm going to say uh, Manly, bro. Manly, um, I'm going to be hungry for the win. Uh, Roosters still look clunky, bro. Manly, uh, close one for me. Yeah, by six. that's what I had on my predictor too. Nice, bro. Um, yeah, Seabus, you already called this. Warriors at Seabus uh, Stadium over the Titans. Uh, Panthers Storm. This the one you took the Storm, was it? I took the Storm, not confidently, bro. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Can I just be a, a changes guy? And because I just seen, I seen oh, it's that blue bit state. You did a lot of convincing in your your build up to this, mate. I did, uh... I did, because the Panthers have been just too perfect. I think they're they're due, but it's at Blue Bit Stadium on a Friday night. Um, so I'm I'm going to swing back Panthers for the win on that one. 
changes. What about this, mate? Uh, oh, five o'clock game should be a good running game as long as it's dry over in North Queensland, mate. Um, Cowboys in the Bronx, man, is a. I don't think it's a. It makes a difference in the eight, but I think it's a really important game to kind of you know gauge where you're at. Mm. Uh, big big thing for me is um, so we're we're uh, we're talking about it earlier, but I'm not too sure if uh, uh, Val Holmes is um, beating his um, suspension. Yes. But um, without him, well, we're just gonna uh, presume he's not available because that was a head eye shot. Um, I'm gonna say Broncos bro in a close one. Nice. Too much class. Yeah, that's probably a good call, actually. All right. Um. Dolphins, nice. Knights on a run, man. Um, how did you think the Dolphins went last week? They looked all right, though. So, so let's have Perth as well. That um, was a tight game again. Man, that Dolphins game. Um, you reckon there's a forward pass? That was a big call. That Dolphins yeah. last pass, man. That but was not only that, that, man, it's all the thing. What's in the, I've seen uh, Isako make those. Nail that, eh? Hey, yeah. yeah. Catch kicks, bro. And it was like. Man, under pressure. So, yeah, that's the thing. I was thinking of him like in the Bronx colors. I've seen him he's done that for the Bronx. clutch kicks, yeah. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, this guy, a piece of cake. And then, oh, and he's the leading, and... was, he's the leading um, you know, uh, point scorer in the comp, I think. Pretty sure. Again, again, that game was um, just the way the Dolphins came back with those like, late tries. Like, mm. Serrado has to be, like, as a, again, as the defensive coach. Let's just see those lapses, possibly losing a game that you should have had. Yeah, Dolphins done that to Dolphins. a lot of teams, though. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting one at Perth. I don't know whose home game that is, but I'm going to say because the Knights are still in the hunt, they're going to be a bit more hungry. Plus, they got form on their side. So, Hunts, I mean, sorry, uh, Knights, nice. comfortable winners. Oh, nice. Okay, comfortable. Yeah, uh, Sharks, Rabbits. You seeing anything in the Sharks that gives you hope, mate? So this looks like a yeah, it is a double hitter, bro. Double hitter in Perth. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, right. I Same think Rabbitohs, um this is gonna be a high quality game. I think Sharks um you know, very disappointing in the last the last month or so. Kennedy and, out as well. Uh, I, I like think. to think they're gonna come back, but I think the Rabbitohs will be too strong because they got both teams got a lot to play for, but Rabbitohs probably just just uh, a bit too much firepower, special special for the trail back. Yeah, Will Kennedy out too is a big Yeah, they're too big out, man. The Sharks, so yeah, I think so. Rabbits as well. Eels, Dragons. Um, Do you think Eels are out? They're done, eh? Are they cooked or what? Just there, yeah, Joe Run. And yeah, like I said, man, I feel sorry because Dylan Brown's going to be it's a lot weighs on his shoulders for how they've kind of ended up in this position. But mm. yeah, I don't see them. Um, you know, I think they might they'll win this game, but yeah, yeah like without the, the balance as well. Dragons, Dragons were really um, impressive in their um, in, in their last game, but um, the the Eels, uh, another one of those teams, still in with a sniff. Uh, so they'll be up for this game, bro. Eels for the win. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a good one for Dylan Brown to kind of stamp his return on and. Um, yeah, hopefully maybe do something miraculous with the team on their run home. Um, rounding up the week, man, um, the last game of this week, Raiders. Real disappointing her last week. Um, coming up against the Tigers. Um, and, yeah, Tigers again. Strong showing, just can't can't finish a game. Yeah, they played good, eh? They played, they've got um, potential, man. They've got potential. They just haven't done it for 80 minutes also. Um, yes. I just Sunday feel afternoon. sorry for Ari up, up the man. Like he just gives us all. Like I think mm, that's, he's been playing that's awesome too of late. Yeah, um, yeah. But hey, in saying that, Raiders um, deserve to be favourites. They're in the top eight, so um, Raiders easy win for me down there in Canberra on a Sunday, Ave. Yeah, and Raiders again. Like on the predictor, they got um, they got their run like going quietly again. No one really saying much, but they on my predictor they end up sixth. Just do so enough to get there, eh? Yeah, 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 Raiders could do, you know, just a Raiders again and kind of quietly win that first round, come through and shake mm. up whoever has to go to that second week of the, the top four. So, um, 
Oh, Raiders still in all the sniff. Karolo, Tui, mate, still there. <laughs> nice, us. Um, that's us, man. Uh, anything else? Any shout outs, us? Uh, no, bro. Um, just uh, once again, happy birthday to my uh, my beautiful daughter yesterday. Oh, and, um, yeah, happy birthday, Evelyn. Um, bro, I don't know about next week. I might have a break, bro, because you're over in the VG, man. So enjoy your holiday, us. Yeah, cheers, also. Um, we'll see. I get back. Uh, I get back uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Oh, yep, um, yep. I'll probably uh, have You'll a quick uh, scan game of the day. games. <sighs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. I might look like that old guy. Everyone's on holiday doing jet skis, and I'm trying to watch the game in the bar. <laughs> 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 have a good holiday, us. Take yours. Uh, nice rap, bro. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Check us out on uh, wheswhersnet.com. Skull Warriors. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys.